Um, and let's get my, let's hope my stream deck plays nicely. There we go. Lovely. Um, so yes, as you heard from the intro, hello everybody. I am Jim Scond. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at cloud communications platform Vonage. Um, so if you want to know a bit more about, about what we do at Vonage, um, we've got a sponsors room. So head to the sponsors room. Um, importantly, we've got a code that you can use to get some free credit if you want to test out our, uh, if you want to test out our APIs, if you want to test out our voice APIs, SMS, WhatsApp messaging, things like that. We will have cloud communications platform for that. Um, and we have a, more importantly for people, uh, we have a raffle. So if you want to join the raffle, sign up to the service um, and you've got a chance to win some headphones, which is all very fancy and all very cool. Um, now, I was introduced, obviously, that PHP was mentioned a lot. I am the PHP developer advocate at Vonage, but that's not that's not all I do. Uh, and the important thing is, for anyone who thinks that this is a PHP talk, it's it's not. And uh, you'll see you'll see why. Um, it's uh, it's quite it's quite cool. So, yes, here are my here are my here's my stuff. If you've got any feedback or you want to or there's any we run out of time for questions or something like that, I'm very active on Twitter. I've got uh, I've got a LinkedIn, and like every good developer, I have a huge GitHub graveyard of unfinished side projects. And as mentioned before. Uh, I am the PHP advocate at Vonage. So let's get started. I'm just going to give an outline. Um, I'm going to give an outline on what on, on, on this is it's, it, how this came about. It's sort of a mini story at the start of it, and um, and what came out about it, and how I'm going to tell it. So first things first. Hopefully, something we can all agree on. Um, Testing external APIs that your software relies on is hard, right? Is that, that's not that controversial. Um, it's hard. You, your software uses another API, right? You have no control over that API. You've got to test it. How do you do that? Um, I found something. It's, uh, it's a library. Just found it. Tell you what, it's not even cutting edge. It's, it's not even new. It's, just, it's been going on for it's, it's old tech. It's been going around for ages. So I thought, okay, give it a go, check it out. And the conclusion is, oh my goodness, what is wrong with us? Why is everybody not using this? Everybody should be using this. We've got it all wrong. Whatever you know, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. We use this. Um, I'm being, of course, a little bit dramatic because I have a dramatic background, but this is what it sort of looks like. So I'm going to talk about how problems come about when you have external API dependencies and what the library is that I found and what it does, when to use it, how to use it, should you use it? Because, you know, as always, it depends. Right. I wonder if anybody in the audience knows what this is, or this, this is, point the right way. Um, this is a Betamax tape a closed proprietary format introduced by Sony. Um, it was technologically quite superior for its time. And a very interesting fact for you, the last ever Betamax tape was produced in March 2016, which is ridiculous. Um, that's how long they're actually being produced for. On the other hand, this is something that people might recognize more. Well, this is something that people over the age of 30 might recognize more. This is an open format, this is FOSS Asia after all, an open format called VHS, which was designed by JVC and was adopted by Mitsubishi and Hitachi. This was technologically not as superior as, uh, as, the, beta, as the Betamax format. It, it wasn't as good, but it was an open format, which meant that it was adopted widely and it absolutely killed Betamax. And there is there's a story there, I think, behind things. So, because, you know, I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking, come on, Jim, is this really relevant? I thought we were talking about APIs. What's going on? What's this? And the answer is, of course, yes. Why else would I be talking about it? Of course it's relevant. Oh, God. Oh, hard, to, hard to please. Oh, look, and v VHS came out first too. So that's, an interest, that's, that's quite an interesting fact that I didn't know about. Anyway, yes, it is relevant. I mean... Sort of, sort of, you know, a, a bit. Mm, what I'm trying to say here is, look, it's a tenuous link, but I've got to get your attention somehow, right? Um, what I'm trying to say, what makes this relevant is this very important message, which is sometimes 
the most practical solution in software is the best one. Betamax was the correct option because it was technologically superior, but it wasn't the best one because it wasn't the most practical option, which leads me on to bugbears about software development that I have. And this is the biggest one, first of all, which is this quote. Oh, don't muck what you don't own. Ah, um, look, it's, do you know what, when I hear this, when I hear this as like a staple in the software industry, don't mock what you don't own. I think of a film from 1998 called The Big Lebowski, and it takes place in a car, and the, the scene is wrong. <laughs> wrong. You're not wrong, Walter. You're just an asshole. And it's so true, though, isn't it? Don't mock what you don't own is like, it's not wrong. It's correct. But it doesn't make things easy, right? We have things hard. And not being able to mock something you that you actually rely on is like difficult. So get what I'm trying to say here is that we already have to tiptoe around external dependencies. This is I, I come from the PHP land, but if we're talking like if we're starting to get into Node and JavaScript, people who use those ecosystems know what NPM is like, right? You're downloading thousands and thousands of other people's code and libraries. This is why we need tooling. And given how difficult it is, and we have to like, we have to solve so many problems, it leads me on to my second bugbear, and this is a bit different because I have respect for I have respect for don't mock we don't own, but this something that I hear all the time. We don't have time for testing. Who says this? Oh, we don't have time for testing. If someone says this, if a company says we don't have time to test our software, I think. <laughs> Clowns, absolute clowns. But it's a bit, it's not very helpful to just to just say, you know, people are idiots. Let, let's look at why that quote comes about. Why do people say we don't have time for testing? I'll give you a real world example from something that I worked on maybe about three or four years ago, right? So imagine you have a thing. Let's say you're building something for Shopify. So it's a cloud-based platform. You have no control over it. You have access to all of its API. How do you how do you build and extend off Shopify? Well, you do it via its API, right? So I have something locally. So in this case, I've said Symfony Framework. Could be anything. Could be Flask. It could be Django. It could be Express. I don't know. Any kind of full stack framework, right? And the way you communicate and extend off Shopify is you use the API. And then if you want to take states out of Shopify, you store the state locally and you sort of amalgamate the two talking through the API. So how do I test this? How do I write this? How do I write my service? And I want to test it. Okay, well, the industry norm seems to be, well, we need to separate out. You can't, if you're going to test it, you can't talk to directly to Shopify, right, anymore. Because that, 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 it don't mock what you don't own, right? So you're not in control of Shopify, therefore you can't own it. So you, you need to ring fence the API. And then um, I'm going to use PHP unit and PHP spec for sort of for mocking. So uh, for anyone else, this is like Jest, or it's like you know, uh, or it's like R unit for um, sorry R spec for Ruby. This is the the testing runner, right? So how do you mock the API responses? Well, what you seem to do is you create static fixtures as like JSON. You have like a whole load of fixtures in JSON files, right? And then your that's what you're testing against. Okay, fine. So what happens when this happens in Shopify? Yay! API change, and then you've got your API change, and it's so bad that it's in like word art from like 2001. So if the API changes, then what happens to the JSON? The JSON is now like totally, totally wrong because it's not the like if you haven't got an API change that has been documented and you didn't expect it, therefore your responses are wrong, and therefore PHP unit goes, eh, eh, pff, uh, don't know what's going on, and then Clippy appears, and then you have a trash fire, which is a burning thing with bananas, and uh, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. It's all wrong. Just forget about it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why people say we don't have time for testing, is situations like that. But talking of situations like that, I'm in that situation, right? I have exactly the same problem. At Vonage, I'm responsible for the PHP SDK libraries, i.e. if you want to talk to Vonage and you're a PHP developer, I maintain the open source library for it, right? So what happens is you have to talk to Vonage's APIs. How does it do that? Exactly the same situation. but. Being a center of excellence at Vonage Engineering, I'm not just going to say we don't have time for testing because that doesn't work. So you've got to have some sort of solution for it. 
And this is how the solution kind of came about. I work in a multi-language team. Uh, there's a Python advocate, there's a Ruby advocate, there's a Node advocate, et cetera, et cetera. So I was talking to the, to the, to the Ruby advocate and, um, and the Ruby advocate, Carl, goes, he says, uh, oh, I've got a solution for you. Why don't you just use VCR? And I'm like, oh, you know, oh, could try that. But, but what? No, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Go back. Go. You, what do you mean use VCR to do the testing? He's like, yeah, it's in Ruby. It's called VCR. Uh, what it does is it records all of your APIs and then uh, plays it back. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, but there's not going to be a PHP one. And he goes like, eh, hold on a sec. Yeah, here it is. And just like that click, I was like, what's this? What is this magic? And I checked it out and I was like, oh my goodness, why, why, why are we not doing this? So let's talk about what it does. Um, what does it do? So imagine we have our brand new Nikam Matsui uh, digital VHS recorder, Matsui being a British company that tried to pretend to be Japanese um, because that's what it was like in the 90s. And you presumably want to try and set up your um, auto program record, uh, which was something that seemingly never worked. Um, and what you do is the API is what you're recording. So we pop in a cassette of our limited edition Jurassic Park. Uh, uh, oh. Um, Sorry, not Jurassic Park. Sorry, our Vonage API. You plug it into the cassette. You run your unit tests. You press record. It records it. And then you take out the cassette and you put it into your API library of all of the things. And then when you want to run your unit tests, you pop the cassette back in, press play, and that's it. And what you've done is you've cut out the API. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, how does it do that? This is stuff response. This is stuff to do with PHP. Okay, so what it does is anything that goes over curl, or if you're a masochist, soap, uh, or the stream mapper. It intercepts it, right? So how does it do that, Jim? And the answer to that is, okay, look, please don't ask me how the authors got around Ruby's monkey patching to do this because it's probably voodoo leaves and chicken bones and things like that. The answer is technically under the hood. It's very complex and I don't know quite how it works. Um, but how does it look? So it's a it's got a base singleton client. It's got a storage path. It's got a storage format, a mode, an on, off, and eject, right? And this is what it looks like in code. So you've got a base singleton client in PHP. There it is, VCR class. If you use the configure method, it returns back a VCR configuration object, and then you have all of your methods available on it. So in this case, you use set cassette set path, and that's where your library goes. Storage format, you can choose when you record to store in JSON, or you can choose XML, or you can choose YAML. The mode is important. This is when you're like doing record or when you're doing playback and it looks like that. So you've got set mode, new episodes. That means it will record everything. Or you can go to set mode to none. If you do that, that means that when you run the unit tests, it will do it, put it into play. You have VCR turn off, turn off, on and off and eject. Eject saves the, saves the cassette when you're completed, right? Very important that you have turn on and off because that's you're in control of what parts of your test suite you want to be recorded or tested. So that's how the code kind of looks, right? So a real world example, how does it look with the testing? And this example is, yes, it is PHP, but it might look familiar to JavaScript developers. It uses what's called the PEST testing framework, which is the, uh, not, the, the not quite the default testing framework for Laravel yet, but it will be. Um, it's a testing runner that's designed on um, JavaScript's Jest framework, which is why it kind of, the API kind of looks like this. So. This is a live test. It will save, it will send an SMS to a live server at Vonage, and then we expect the response count to be one, i.e. you've sent it, and then we expect the status to be zero. That's a live test. You don't want to run that all the time, because if you run that all the time, it will cost you money every time you do it. And you don't want to do that in your CI and pipeline whenever you've got like GitHub actions running every time, right? That's 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 not what you want. But that is a live test. So what I did is I took pests, a, a functionality specifically to do with pest, right? You have a, a traits function or uses function. And this was built for things like, um, this was done for things like for unit tests when you have, when you need to do migrations, right? You want a fresh database for every single unit test you do. So what I did is I added those VCR methods into the trait. So now you can have like your set mode or your on and off wrapped around, and that will now run as part of the test before every single test. So how does it look with VCR enabled? This is the same test, but now you can see you've got this switch VCR to true, now set VCR to new episodes. If you run this, this will record and then it will eject the tape and it will save it into the file system. This is how it looks. And as you can see, for those of you familiar with things like Insomnia and Postman, it looks very similar to that. It looks like an HTTP wire request, right? 
there's nothing sort of that mysterious about it. That's your recording and it says, here's everything I've recorded. It gives you all of the headers, it gives you everything, right? And when you want to play that back, we've put switch VCR to true, load in the cassette that we saved, set it to the play mode. And now the live test exactly as it was before will no longer talk to Vonage. It will just play back what you've recorded. That is absolutely ridiculous levels of power that you can have. Um, so reasons why you should use it. Cassette libraries of API changes versus your external dependencies documentation. This is this is quite a cool kind of quite a cool thing. And it, look, it sort of goes a bit like this, right? So documentation needs to be up to date. And it sounds ridiculous, but how many times have you coded with an external dependency on something and its documentation is not up to date or something has been launched and it's just and it's not been documented yet? How it becomes a sort of a chicken and egg situation, right? Um, you don't know. Um, you don't know what uh, you don't know if you update the API. What we try at Vonage is we try and update the API at the same time, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Whereas if you use VCR, you have a single source of truth for your application and and your developers. It, it, it takes out the kind of human documentation element. The documentation, yes, it needs very important. It needs to be there, but for what you're developing at speed, you actually have something that's more concrete. Um, but what if you know you? What if your external dependency? What if they accidentally ship? Um, they ship something, or what happens if they break their semantic versioning that they have, where they've accidentally had a backwards compatibility break? They could do that. There's nothing, you know. It, the problem is it's in their hands, whereas with VCR it brings it back into your hands. The the cassette libraries by saving document like saving all of these cassettes as as recordings, it moves the dependency from them to you. So that's why I would advocate for it as something that's very, very powerful. And similarly, bug turnarounds and visibility. Now, this is this is crazy, right? Let's here's an example, right? GitHub issue on your library or your project pops up and you go, okay, fine. Um, hmm, it's because it's relying on a third party API call and it's broken. Right. I'm gonna run the project locally and then I'm gonna tell it to record a new pro a uh, new a new cassette. And now I'm going to play it back with my pest test runner and bingo, the power on the power, the power that a developer has of finding an API problem like that, because the test suite has failed because you've updated what's going on with the external API. That's a fairly kind of powerful use case for using something like VCR. Another one, speed, there's a bomb on your boss, um, with full credit to Keanu Reeves is acting. Um, do you remember before where we said we don't have time for testing, right? And I've just said, I'll tell you what, if you use VCR, speed, speed becomes something that is in your hands. And here's an example of that. This is another thing which is like, here is, here I'm going to show you the superpower of this library. Um, so build me the thing, Jim. Uh, I've just chosen Symphony Framework, or I could choose Laravel, or I could choose Django or Rails. I don't know, whatever. Build me the thing. Okay, here's the thing. The thing requires, it relies on an external vendor API, oh, Facebook or Shopify, I don't know, like some, some, some sort of big thing or Twitter, right? Um, and that logo is for the open API spec. Um, if anyone wants to know more about the open API spec, we're big into it at Vonage naturally, ask me about it because it's amazing. So it relies on this external API, right? So what you need to do is set up the vendor account and then, then you're just going to write the tests in your in in your product and then hit record whilst it makes all the whilst it makes all the api recalls so then you commit the tape into source or s3 or something like that we'll get on to we'll get onto one of the downsides in a, in a minute about storage but you commit it and then uh then go ship it you've just created a piece of software that relies entirely on someone else's api you've done it at speed with full test driven development from using that library and that to me is stonks. Uh, that's amazing. Um, that kind of power really did. That's the reason why I just said, uh, why aren't more people using this? Um, and because I am a man that is approaching my 40s, I like offline stuff, right? But it is important to notice this for speed. It means that you don't have to, you don't have to make all those API calls all the time. You record them once, but it means you've also got potentially offline development. That's pretty powerful. Um, you know, much better back in my day. Look at that Amiga, beautiful piece of kit. Um, old man yells at cloud, et cetera, et cetera. But 
as an advocate, it is my it is my job to not just say you should use this thing. You also need to know about why you shouldn't use it because there's downsides to everything, right? This is a big one. External, oh, external production vendors. You're relying on someone else, but what about the accounts and things like that? And maybe you can't set up a staging environment with the with someone else's thing. You know, it might not be possible. Um, which kind of brings in another aspect: security. You've got to think about how you organize your secrets and your environment variables. Real big thing here is third party data. You're making calls to external service. Uh, can you set up fixtures and things like that? You've definitely got to make sure that you don't have any live data in there. Otherwise, otherwise the live data will make it into your local file system and record it in a cassette. And you really don't want to be violating um, GDPR rules. That's in the UK, sorry, in the EU, but it's probably different out in, um, out in, uh, um, out in APAC. Um, or maybe you can't set up a staging environment and also if you accidentally trigger something where you put record then it's going to, it might cost you loads of money what happens if there's 5000 10000 tests and they're all making api calls you're going to have to stage that and, and control it and if you don't control it someone accidentally runs the pipeline and then it makes like 10000 api calls that's going to cost you money you've got to lock these things down so it's something to think about and another big one is in your library you've got to organize your library, right? So you need some strategy about how you do it, about how you name it, about how, where you store it. Um, and also your software might already have some CI pipelines and it does some fancy stuff depending on Git tags or something like that. It means that you have to work around a solution on how you integrate this into your software. But yeah, the, the, top, the, top thing, the top thing to take away from this that I think is absolutely amazing is like I said, you might have thought this is a PHP talk. And yes, I'm a PHP developer, but it's not. And this slide is kind of unique to FOSS Asia because it's all about free and open source software. Is this is the this slide is the money shot, right? <laughs> There's no sort of better way of putting it. Um, it's not a PHP talk because I found implementations in get ready for it, everything. There they all are. Take a screenshot if you want to use VCR. It doesn't matter what backend language you use. There's one for Golang, there's one for Java, there's one for .NET Core, but there's also one for C Sharp if you want to use C Sharp in .NET. Um, there's ones for Node. There's equivalents of all of them, um, and that is that makes me realise first of all how powerful this software, and, 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 and then secondly, I really don't understand why this is almost like not an industry norm. Okay, um, so the conclusions, whilst I motored through this talk as quickly as possible, um, the conclusion to draw really is first of all make sure it fits your use case blah 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 blah. as an engineer I should say it depends because it might just this thing might not be applicable for everyone right it, it, it just and also we're all talking about your software relying on external external apis not everyone's software is going to be reliant on external apis you know some of it doesn't but make sure have a have a look at it first and make sure that it fits your use case of what you're doing but in my case it's fits my use case for the libraries that I maintain. And so I'm now starting to refactor all of the, all of the open source libraries that we have at Vonage, um, or the ones I'm responsible for, in order to use it. So that, big win, yay! Um, but for that contribution for open source ecosystems and how they work, it's very important that, that, that I sort of build on top of that. So what I decided to do, is I decided to uh, to create an integration to make sure that if you use Laravel and you use the PEST testing framework, I'm going to create an in like a, a plugin for it um, to, to integrate it as part of to make it part of your uh, your core Laravel installation. Um, I don't know how long that will take, but it's definitely something that I think people have kind of asked for. Um, so that's my uh, that's my very sort of brief introduction to PHP VCR. Um, thank you very much for having me, and hopefully, in a second, the MC will pop up again. Um, I was about to answer the questions in the chat, but Clarice, our community manager, is about to, I think, about the uh, the announce the uh, the winner for our headphones. All right. Um, yeah. So I think. Um... So we have uh, we have one question here. I think. Uh, um... It's, it's not very clear to some people in the audience what exactly PHP VCR is. Could you like summarize summarize like what it is? And like, yeah, so if you have software that talks to other that talks to uh, that, that talks to other services that uses other people's APIs, P 
PHP VCR will allow you to record um, all of the responses from that API so that when you test your software, you don't have to make the calls anymore. You have it stored locally within your within your software. That's like mm. that's the that's the really brief intro of what it is. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I have one myself. Um, so you 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 talked about offline. Um, I'm a I'm personally a robotics guy, so we're dealing a lot with the different vendors of robots, and and they all have different APIs. Do you see this this can be used in uh, in a, in an environment like that, like with like, because this seems to be like web uh, oriented, or at least the 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 initial uh, um, what it comes from, and what it's being mostly used, right? But do you see that if if this can be used with like APIs from like robots or like APIs from like different kinds of software that are not like web frameworks or like web uh, development stuff? Yeah, it could be it could be used. Um, I think. It's, it's, it's kind of it's sort of a, sort of a difficult one. I mean, it was it's it's VCR by its nature because they're because it's recording web calls. It is it is it's very much designed and aimed at um, about uh, you know full stack web development um, uh, or you know for web application development. But on the other hand, the thing is, if you use something natively like um, like like React Native or or, Py or Python's kind of like um, or Python's compiler into into sort of into Linux desktop apps and things like that. I mean, potentially you could still you could still use it because in PHP, def, in PHP is is a web language only, right? So that, I mean, people try to port it locally, but uh, to, to to desktop development, but it doesn't work. But Python um, can be used for that, which means if you had a desktop application that did make external API calls still over the web, you could still use it within like a compiled app. Mm, I see. All right. Yeah. And then we have another one saying, is there any chance to see VCI web RTC replay ability if it's not their support already? Uh, sorry, can you say, can you say it again? That uh, VCR web RTC replay ability, if not supported yet already. I, I don't know the I don't know the answer to be, to be honest. Um, I don't to be honest, I don't in terms of in terms of video, I don't know that. I don't know that much. Um, I've only just started getting used to sort of WebRTC. We've got libraries that use them natively. But um, if you have uh, VCR, will record, because VCR, all it's doing is recording um, HTTP wire calls and their and their payloads. So it would probably be if you're trying to record like uh, WebRTC inter interactions, you, you could do it if it as long as it was using HTTP. But the only difference is, is that it would be probably a bit too expensive to use. Like it'd be making like hundreds and hundreds of calls, of calls. but it could potentially be used. Mm. I see. Okay. Um, I think that's all for questions. Uh, maybe uh, if there's some more, we can. Uh, yeah, the actual, uh, the actual, the, the actual yeah. build, building on that question. Sorry, is that I didn't realize that it used on. It actually relies on UDP under the hood. So the answer is no, but someone's probably ported it. Oh, uh, okay. So all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, very interesting talk. Very interesting technology, and um, very appreciate all the amazing images and the reference to the Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me, everyone. All right. Thank you very much.